Most jobs are impossible without the proper tools. A carpenter can't drive nails with his bare hands. A groundskeeper can't cut a lawn with a pair of scissors. And you can't work with hazardous materials in your street clothes. You need personal protective equipment to stay safe. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, is a blanket term for any item you wear that protects you from contamination by hazardous materials as well as physical injuries. This includes chemical protective clothing, CPC, respirators, and specialized gear such as hard hats, face shields, and work boots. OSHA's Hazwapper Regulation classifies PPE into categories, levels A, B, C, and D. Level A PPE is used where you face the greatest dangers, while level D PPE is for areas that are relatively safe. Let's look at these four groups of PPE in detail. Level A PPE gives you the greatest level of skin, respiratory, and eye protection. It's used in places where uncovered skin is at the mercy of caustic or toxic fumes and liquids, and where breathing the air might kill you. In environments like this, respirators are highly important. Level A respirators must have a full face piece, to protect your eyes as well as your mouth, nose, and lungs. These respirators must also provide a positive pressure supply of pure air. Positive pressure means that whether you are breathing in or out, the respirator is always pushing fresh air into your face piece. This positive pressure airflow prevents any contaminated air from seeping in by keeping the air that moves through your respirator in constant circulation. There are two types of positive pressure air supplying respirators. Self-contained breathing apparatus, SCBAs, and supplied air respirators, SARs. SCBAs use a portable air tank, which is strapped onto your back. SARs, on the other hand, supply air by means of a long hose from a source located some distance away. Each type of respirator has its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, it is easier for you to move around with an SCBA tank on your back than it is when you are trailing a long SAR hose behind you. The weakness of an SCBA, however, is that your air supply is restricted to the amount that you can carry with you. SARs restrict your movements more than SCBAs, but they free you from having to lug around a cumbersome air tank. And since an assistant can switch your air tanks while you work, you can wear an SAR for a much longer time than you can an SCBA. As we mentioned earlier, Level A PPE provides the highest degree of protection for your skin as well as your lungs. That is why it includes totally encapsulating chemical protective clothing, also known as TECP suits. These provide the maximum possible protection against contamination by keeping you isolated from the outside air. They cover you from head to toe and provide an airtight seal against gases and liquids. For best results, a totally encapsulating suit must be used with chemical-resistant outer and inner gloves. Chemical-resistant boots with steel toes and shanks are also a necessity. This is because your hands and feet are the parts of your body most likely to come into contact with contaminated surfaces. 
you may have to touch contaminated objects by hand, and you'll be walking on ground that might contain hazardous materials. While level A PPE is used wherever your respiratory system or skin might suffer immediate irreversible harm, you would wear level B PPE where skin hazards are not as severe. As with level A, level B includes air supplying respirators, SCBAs or SARs. But unlike level A, Level B does not include totally encapsulating suits. The main function of Level B Chemical Protective Clothing, CPC, is to protect you from skin irritation and splashes, not lethal doses of gases or vapors. Specifically, Level B CPC consists of a one or two piece chemical splash suit with a hood chemical-resistant outer and inner gloves, and chemical-resistant boots with steel toes and shanks. As you've seen, levels A and B PPE allow you to work in places where the air is dangerous to breathe. By contrast, level C PPE is used where you can breathe the air, provided you have a little help. Level C is used when you know what kinds of airborne contaminants are on site. That the contaminants are not immediately dangerous to life or health. How much of each contaminant is there. And that the contaminants do not exist in concentrations above your respirator's ability to filter them out. The major difference between level C and the higher levels of PPE involves the use of air purifying respirators, APRs, rather than air supplying respirators. APRs filter out contaminants before you can inhale them. This type of respirator does not have its own air supply. You remember that air supplying respirators keep air moving, which creates positive pressure. By contrast, the power of your own breathing is what moves air through an air purifying respirator. As a result, the pressure inside of your face piece is less than that of the outside air. This is called negative pressure. An air purifying respirator should never be used in any environment where an air supplying respirator is required since the filters in the APR could be overwhelmed by the contaminant levels in the air. And not having a tank of clean, pure air when you need one can be fatal. While level A, B, and C environments require some sort of respiratory protection, level D PPE is only used in areas where the air is safe to breathe. In fact, level D PPE should never be used on any site where respiratory or skin hazards exist. This level protects you from nuisance contamination only, such as materials that might stain your clothes. Typically, level D PPE includes coveralls, chemical resistant boots or shoes with steel toes and shanks, safety glasses or chemical splash goggles, and work gloves. Optional equipment for use with all levels of PPE includes coveralls, a hard hat, and long underwear. Why long underwear? Because it absorbs perspiration and helps to keep you cool. No matter where you work or what you do, one of the four levels of PPE will be suitable for your job. For more information, consult your supervisor. While it would be impossible to work around hazardous materials without personal protective equipment, PPE can also cause its own problems. One of these is heat stress. This occurs when PPE interferes with your body's ability to cool itself. Here's how. When you are hot, you sweat. 
Normally, your sweat will evaporate. This is what cools you down. But when you are sealed up in chemical protective clothing, your sweat can't evaporate. The longer that your sweat is prevented from evaporating, the higher your body temperature will rise. Eventually, you will develop heat stress. Heat stress causes disabilities that range from mild to fatal. The least dangerous of these is heat rash, also known as prickly heat. This is an inflammation that becomes worse as the temperature around you gets higher. Sometimes heat stress takes the form of painful spasms in your arms, legs, or abdomen. These are heat cramps. A more dangerous condition, heat exhaustion, is caused by overexerting yourself in a hot environment. In this case, you sweat profusely and your skin becomes cool and moist. If left untreated, heat exhaustion can lead to the worst kind of heat stress, heat stroke. You're a man down. Come on. Heat stroke occurs when the body can no longer cool itself. Left untreated, heat stroke can kill. Symptoms include dizziness, nausea, a severe headache, hot or dry skin, and a body temperature of 106 degrees or higher. Of course, the best way to treat heat stress is to prevent it from happening in the first place. Your employer can help by alternating your work and rest periods or allowing you to work during cooler times of the day. You can help yourself by drinking lots of water or special beverages which replace the fluids and electrolytes that you sweat away. Electrolytes are chemicals that help your nerves to conduct electrical impulses. Losing electrolytes through perspiration can cause a number of serious health problems. Check the safety procedures for your site to learn more about how to avoid heat stress when you are wearing chemical protective clothing or other PPE. In addition to causing heat stress, because it is often heavy and cumbersome, chemical protective clothing, CPC, can cause other problems as well. Most CPC actually decreases your ability to handle things and your freedom of movement. Wearing CPC can also make it more difficult for you to see and hear what is around you. For example, when you wear a totally encapsulating chemical protective suit, you see the world through two sheets of plastic, the face pieces of your respirator and the suit itself, which can easily get fogged up or scratched. Your ears are also covered by both your inner and outer suits. Since we rely on our eyes and ears to provide us with the information that we need to keep us out of danger, wearing CPC can increase the potential for some types of on-the-job accidents. To cut down on your chances of having an accident, you must be fully trained in how to use PPE and be comfortable wearing it. Alternating work and rest periods helps you to stay safe as well. This keeps you from becoming fatigued and the less fatigued you are, the less likely you are to be adversely affected by the bulk of your PPE. So, whenever you wear personal protective equipment, remember, always make sure that you have the proper training Take time to get comfortable with your PPE and don't work for an extended period without a break. When combined with your mandatory medical surveillance examinations, these measures will ensure that you stay healthy on the job for a long time to come. Now, let's review. There is a wide range of personal protective equipment available to help you stay safe when working with hazardous chemicals. From chemical protective clothing and respirators to hard hats and work boots. PPE is grouped into four levels, A through D, 
based upon the degree of protection it gives you. A provides the most protection. D the least. Make sure that you are using the right level of PPE for the job that you are doing. Be mindful of the problems that PPE can cause, such as restricted freedom of movement, heat stress, or difficulties in seeing and hearing what is around you. Make sure you have received all of the necessary training so that you know exactly how to work with PPE safely. Practice wearing PPE that is bulky or cumbersome so that you get used to it. Avoid heat stress by drinking plenty of fluids and alternating work and rest periods whenever possible. For a carpenter or a groundskeeper, not having the right tools can be inefficient, even silly. But in your job, not having the tools you need can be a matter of life or death. So, play it safe. Find out what PPE you need for the job. Learn everything that you can about it. And use it.